Only one man commands the flight of a football. He is the quarterback. This is a story about the greatest quarterbacks who have ever played in the National Football League. Men who earned fame and glory, each in his own way. This is red, right, flip. 61, double shoot. All right, 75, double Flanker, I go out and K go on two. I right, open four right, 29 geo, slot drag. On the deuce. This is red left, Penner, 57, wing delay, fullback corner on one. Red right, power 49, near geo, it's on two. It's on two, ready? No break. position in football requires as many different skills as quarterback. It requires a cool head. 55! And a tough butt. Here he comes. Come on, D! I got a throw back there after a while. Okay, let's do something with it. In the history of a national league, many have played the position, but only a few can be called the best ever. Camera's eye is drawn to the quarterback. He is the equivalent of the Hollywood matinee idol, and his image combines arm with charm. These gables and grants of the gridiron don't leave footprints in cement, but a wristband leaves a similar impression on adoring fans. The best passes of the modern era are big box office, and their heroic identities are worthy of any movie ever. For ten years, Oakland's quarterback played the role of a crafty snake. Baltimore features a sharpshooter called the Rustin Rifle. Cleveland's hero engineers more last-second rescues than Errol Flynn. And San Diego's main attraction is an aerial ace who commands a daring dawn patrol. These stars further the tale of golden arms, glamour boys and folk heroes that marks the evolution of the pro-passing game. The tale begins in 1937 when Sammy Baugh joined the Redskins and ushered in a new era for NFL offenses. In 1945, Baugh established a still unequaled NFL single season accuracy record by completing 70% of his passes. This was the stuff of folk legend and helped immortalize him as Slingin' Sam. In the 50s, Bob Waterfield aligned his mission with that of his wife, leading lady Jane Russell. Waterfield was the leading man of an explosive Rams offense that in 1950 averaged over 38 points a game. Still an NFL record. Waterfield Midas touch and his off-the-field golden boy image brought the pro quarterback further into the spotlight. During the 60s, the golden boy with the golden arm was the Redskins' fun-loving Sonny Jerkison. It was a golden arm that worked in forward 
and reverse. Come game time, that arm worked in overdrive. Jurgensen's passes struck like lightning, and he became the NFL's second-ranked quarterback of all time. Yet Washington, D.C. was too small for Sonny Jurgensen's big talents and his appetite for post-game good times. He was perhaps better suited to the hustle and bustle of New York City. 1965. The town belonged to Joe Namath, whose eyes melted many a Manhattan lady. He earned the tag Broadway Joe and became pro football's ultimate glamour boy. His outrageous bad fascinated millions who followed his after dark exploits. Sometimes they talk about drinking and conniving around with ladies and stuff. You know, it seems almost un-American to me for a bachelor not to marry, you know, go around uh, having a drink with a lady now and then. And how, why all of a sudden that's become an evil in me, uh, I don't know. But some people don't like it. Well, you can't please any everybody. Uh, I'm just uh, <laughs> trying to get along, you know, just, <laughs> just trying to get by. Look at that shot. In 1967, the Jets' Namath became the first quarterback in pro football history to pass for 4,000 yards in one season. It was 12 years before this feat was duplicated. He was a fiery competitor who met all challenges head on. Namath was a young man on the move, propelled by the speed with which he unloaded a football, the special zip in his arm, and an unwavering belief in his abilities. I don't know where anybody else's head is. I, I don't know what kind of game they call. I feel that I, I've made very few mental errors in professional football over the last few years. I feel I can throw as well or better than anybody. and. Uh, I think mentally, throwing the football, uh, well, I feel confident I can play better than anybody that's ever played a position. Namath, though, was justified. In 1968, he brought Jet fans an AFL title. Then, Ashley predicted victory for the heavily favored Baltimore in Super Bowl III. It was no empty boast. Namath passed for over 200 yards in the Jets' stunning win. The first ever for an AFL team. He earned MVP honors and respect for the other league that would soon become dominant. But Ben Joe Namath was always a trendsetter. And his arm remained in fashion long after Super Bowl III. In 1972, he led the NFL in passing yardage. Early against Baltimore that season, he passed for 496 yards and six touchdowns. His marvelous arm could still electrify a crowd and send a charge through his teammates. Joe Namath's arm rarely failed him, but his knees did. The surgeon's knife and the defender's cutting blow upended Namath from his position on top of the world. With the life drained from his knees, Namath lost control of his drop-back skills. Manhattan, 
the past pocket had once been Namath's personal playground. It eventually became his burial ground. The glitter of a sparkling career had turned to dust, but the image endures, especially in that moment in January 1969, Broadway Joe Namath proved that he deserved to bask in the spotlight.